So, how to share screen on Zoom. Screen share is super useful, and in today's Zoom tutorial, you'll learn all about how to do it. And later in the video, I'll also teach you some pro tips you need to use. Away we go. Okay, let's start by simulating a meeting so that we can practice the steps. And we'll practice it without any other participants in there so that we can get the steps right. So let's just name myself to no friends Nigel for today. As the meeting host, you have the power to enable or disable screen sharing for other participants. And you can do that via the security panel here. So just check that that option there is checked. Now, if you're in a meeting where someone else is the host and you wanna share your screen and this message pops up, then that means that they have it disabled at their end. So if you wanna go ahead and share your screen, you're gonna to have to ask them either verbally or maybe in the chat box to get permission for them to turn it on. Uh, in this case, I don't think I'll be making any demands. They're pretty scary looking. Another way to enable screen sharing is via the advanced sharing options here. I'm hiding, let's just move that out of the way. So you have the options between only the host or all participants. Now, you'd probably use only the host if you're delivering a webinar and it's only a one-way sort of meeting and you're not having um, interactions from other people. So maybe it's a live webinar. Um, whereas when it's more of a meeting situation, that's when you'd probably wanna have all participants selected. So it's probably better just to leave it as all participants in general. For this next option, it's pretty self-explanatory, but let's give an example. So let's say that you're in a meeting and someone's sharing their screen. You'll be able to have the option to share your screen straight away when that is selected. But if it's selected as only host, if you're just a general participant in the meeting and someone is sharing their screen and you try to click share screen, you won't be able to, but the host will be able to. So it just gives the host a bit more power as to who's sharing screen and when. Um, so if you wanna control your meeting, leave it on only host or if you want to just give everyone full access, leave it on all participants. There is one other option on this settings screen and it can get a bit confusing, but it's a pretty cool feature and I'm going to get to that a little bit later. Before we move on to the good stuff, if you're new here and you like this style of video, it'd be really helpful for me if you were to subscribe to my channel. It tells me you appreciate the content and truly motivates me to keep making similar content. And this channel is all about inspiring and educating you with all things video on your device and desktop. Okay, let's move on. Now we're into the purpose of this video, so let's click share screen to bring up some awesome share screen options. This screen can be a bit overwhelming when you first see it, so let's break it down bit by bit. We'll start in the top left. So you can see I've got desktop one, two, and three. Now I've actually got two external monitors hooked up and one of them is running ScreenFlow, which is an application I use to record the screen captures for these tutorials. And I'm gonna do a tutorial on that in the future. The other one is, I'm actually running PowerPoint, so I'll get to that in a minute, how we can include that in a screen share. And then desktop one, which you can see is represented with a one here in the corner. Oh, nice still shot. Looks like I uh, might have had a glass of wine or two there. Another option is the whiteboard. We'll get to that later and then iPhone via AirPlay and cable. We'll get to that later as well. But the main two things that people will probably wanna do is either share one of their desktops or share an application window. But let me unplug my external monitors so you can see everything on one screen. Okay, we're back to one desktop now. And you can see there's three applications open. Now let's choose Microsoft Word and I'm gonna hit share, okay. And this is a script I'm working on. So you can see, uh, well, I struggle a little bit with improvising word for word what I want to say. Uh, hey, I'm human, so I need a bit of a script and I'm actually reading it now, I can't help it. Hopefully one day I'll be able to ad lib, but the idea of having a script is so I can make things nice and concise for you so you can get bang for buck for your time. So if you do like this delivery style, please give us a thumbs up below. So if you like this delivery style, please, yeah, good. Quick tip, okay, quick tip. If you're ever confused what window or application is being shared, because you've got many things open like I often do, you can always look for this green box. That'll tell you what's being shared. Uh, maybe it's a full screen green box or around the application itself. So that's a good hot tip. Let's move on. Okay, now instead of clicking stop share, I can actually hit new share and then choose to share a different application. And now you can see that this is now being shared and maybe I want to start the slideshow from the current slide and it's going to go full screen which is great and yes I actually ran 
a um, webinar on how to be a cool Zoom participant. All right, back to three desktops the way I like it. Now I'm just gonna share desktop one again for a second and show you this menu bar at the top. Now I've quickly given you a preview of New Share and what that does. It allows you to change between different apps and different uh, windows seamlessly. But if you wanted to hide what you're doing while you're in between sharing things, you can press pause share. Now that doesn't actually stop the other participants from seeing what's on screen. It'll still display your screen share, but it means that you can change magically between windows like this. So when I hit resume share, boom, Microsoft Word is automatically shown without them seeing you change it over. But probably the most important button in this Zoom tutorial for beginners is if you're sharing a screen, you need to know how to stop the share. So that is this big red button here, stop share. There's been times in a meeting where I've forgotten to do it and people are still seeing the screen and I'm talking and I don't want them to see the screen, I want them to see my face. So just make sure you remember to hit the stop share button when you mean to. Okay. A quick tip on sharing videos. So if you wanna share video content, you need to do two things. Number one is you wanna share the computer sound. Number two, you wanna optimize screen share for video clip. And what this does is it tells Zoom that you're about to effectively stream some video content through the Zoom connection and that it needs to prepare and compress the clip so that people can see it without it being too choppy. So maybe you wanna share like a video from YouTube, like I've got queued up here, or even just a video file you have on your desktop. So you'd wanna be sharing the screen and then clicking play. So this is trending on YouTube today. Official yeah. music video. And that's how you do that. Another underutilized feature in the share screen area is the whiteboard. So that's pretty self-explanatory. You can draw different things on the whiteboard and different colors and arrays. Here we go. And that's pretty much the whiteboard. So that's an easy one. You can just stop sharing easily again like this. Now onto some really cool and powerful stuff with Zoom. Share screen in Zoom even allows you to share your phone or tablet via screen share right here. And now I've got Apple devices, so I can go ahead and connect my iPhone or even better is my iPad to Zoom and share that, which is fantastic for teachers that want to use a teaching aid such as an iPad with say the Apple Pencil in there so they can be drawing just the way they want instead of having to use the mouse to draw things on the whiteboard. It's fantastic. Let's see how we can do that. Couple of options, we can either connect via cable, but that's a little bit clunky, so we can go by AirPlay. So let's go for that. So now it's just a matter of following the on-screen prompts. So we'll go to the iPad, make sure we're connected to the right network, click screen mirroring, and boom, we are inside the iPad. So we can open up any application we want and share that. Let's maybe go for Google Earth, and you can see on the fly here, I can show you where I want to go. Hey, let's go to uh, my favorite holiday place, which is PP Islands. Whew, what a place, that is absolute paradise. Can't wait to get back there. Let's just wait for these restrictions to lift and I'll be on an international flight straight there for a nice little holiday, well deserved. So to be able to screen share your tablet on the fly is super powerful and great for teachers that wanna have a teaching aid where they can do some different things with the iPad that they wouldn't be able to do with the desktop. So give it a go, have a bit of a try. Let's now move over to the advanced section of screen sharing. Now a quick tip with sharing a portion of the screen. Maybe instead of showing the whole application window or the whole desktop, I wanna show uh, one of these destinations that looks like it could be the Maldives. That's on the list of places to go. Um, so I'm just sharing that small part and not anything else. So it's a good way to sort of highlight something on the page. Next we have share music or computer sound only. So maybe you wanna share just background music. I don't know why you'd wanna do that, maybe your doing some karaoke on a webinar. I'm not sure what kind of meeting that is, but hey, don't knock it till you try it. Another super powerful feature that we've got here in Zoom is being able to share content from a second camera. Okay, so maybe you've got another camera hooked up via an external webcam, or in my case, uh, a professional camera hooked up via some adapter cables that you need to make a professional camera talk to the computer. 
But when would you want to use something like this? Well, let's just click share for now and let's just switch camera and now I'm over to my inbuilt webcam which is no good at all. Uh, I'm switching back to my main camera. So what you can do is maybe you're delivering some kind of cooking show and you want to have the camera over the top of um, the ingredients area that you're preparing so you can have one camera showing when you're speaking and then you can click the button and then flick over to the ingredients view or maybe you are playing the piano and you want to show someone um, with your camera over your shoulder how you're playing the piano keys and then when you want to speak you can go back to speaking like this. So having a built-in multi-camera system where you can deliver multi-cameras through Zoom in a webinar, whew, that's pretty powerful. So well done on you Zoom and have a bit of a play with it. It's a pretty cool feature. Let's do a couple of quick pro tips. So head on over to your settings page and just move on down to share screen. Now I like to have the option for side by side mode selected uh, when sharing screen. And what that does if you hover over the question mark box is if someone's sharing their screen and you don't have that box checked, the share screen is gonna go to full screen and you won't be able to see um, anyone else in the gallery view, maybe one or two people. But if you have that selected, what you can do is resize the share screen and then have the gallery view on the right hand side. So that's a good way of just getting the best of both worlds there. Now, um, the other one is having this box selected for maximize zoom window when a participant shares screen. So that just makes zoom go to sort of not full screen mode, but maximized so that you can see more of what's going on. And I prefer that over enter full screen because when you enter full screen, it kind of does some weird things with the desktop when you've got multiple screens attached. But if you've just got the one desktop, that's gonna be okay too. So just have a bit of a play with those ones. I said I'd come back to multiple screen share and here we are. So I'm in another meeting and actually I've got another friend here. Nigel's friend has subbed in and Nigel's friend is actually sharing a screen. So I can see that here. Now, if there was another participant that was also sharing their screen, I will be able to come over to view options and then select which screen I was seeing right here. So that's how you do that. Now, while we're here, I can also request remote control. So that would mean I can drive someone else's computer from here if they say yes. And then I can also annotate so I can sketch up and mark up what the other person uh, is sharing so they can see some comments that maybe I wanna write into their shared screen. Zoom has really done their homework to include some great features in this app. Speaking of homework, I'd love it if you took a moment to help improve this channel by leaving a short comment below on what you liked or didn't like about this video. Thanks for watching and please support me by subscribing here, then sticking around for the next video or the Zoom tutorial playlist. No comments means I'm perfect, right?